Hi everyone, it's Jaakko here. I'd like to take a look at the new feature in ZBrush 4R8, this live boolean, and how we can use this to create something a little bit more complicated shapes and things like that, and, and combine this, for example, with the array mesh tool in here. So um, I'm just gonna, uh, I have this image here, which I grabbed from the internet, this uh, motorcycle engine, and we can see that we have these kind of ripped uh, shapes going on here, and uh, th things like this can be actually quite a uh, um, take take some time to model by hand, and I was thinking that maybe we could try to use live boolean and array mesh to sort of uh, make this process a little bit faster. And I don't really want to like uh, just model uh, a motorcycle engine here and focus on how we can get it uh, as exact uh, to the reference as possible. But I just want to focus on how we can use these tools and. Maybe that can give you some ideas how you can use live boolean and array mesh and things like that to uh, model pretty much anything with uh, uh, complicated shapes that are connected or intersected or subtracted from each other. So yeah, uh, let's uh, dive in. So before I get started, uh, uh, this button is actually, I, if I remember it right, it was um, around here. So I'm just uh, optimized my, uh, well, changed my customize my uh, ZBrush a little bit, so I don't mind that uh, the buttons might be a little bit different than they are in your version of ZBrush. So I'm just going uh, to grab some cylinder in here and I'm going to make uh, make this a polymesh 3D, so uh, the live boolean is going to work for us. So I just have this and uh, I'm maybe going to go and append some uh, cube 3D for this. So I have this cube 3D here now. I'm just going to take a hit E4 scale. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit so we get the shape like that. And I think maybe we're going to look, uh, maybe this would work for us. I'm just going to scale it up just a little bit so um, it's kind of coming out like that. And uh, maybe while I'm at it, I'm just going to subdivide it so we can get a little bit these rounded uh, uh, edges here. Those are called rounded corners, I mean. Um, I'm just gonna maybe move this up a little bit and then uh, we have this array mesh in here. I'm just gonna get in here. I'm gonna uh, click array mesh to activate it and uh, we have this offset in here and we can see that we have this is the y axis. So I'm just gonna um, get into uh, y amount so we can see that uh, we are now uh, uh, offsetting it. So it's um, offsetting it uh, on or oh, now I'm just gonna maybe put it here and we can do this repeat so we can uh, add a bunch of more things. We can maybe uh, adjust again this uh, Y amount so we can come up with something like that and it's pretty easy to understand how this stuff works. It's not a very complicated at all. So um, maybe something like that could uh, resemble a motorcycle engine. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> If it does, but uh, you know, anyway, uh, for anyway, the point is that uh, I just want to uh, show you guys, and you, then you can come up with your own ideas how you can uh, use this. So, what's really cool about this array mesh, by the way, is that you can uh, use these profiles here. So, we have this offset, and we can we have this Y profile here. So, now we are uh, offsetting it on the Y and using the repeat to, to multiply it. So what I can do is to, to go to Y profile and we can do stuff like that. So uh, this is pretty, pretty powerful. If you see, we can even like put some more complicated curves and more complicated sort of a, so this is gonna affect the distribution of those uh, uh, objects. So and something really good to, to do. And also what's really good is that we can use the same for the scale. So we can, we can uh, really adjust the profile of this really well. So we can see that the, we can actually X amount, uh, we can do like a pyramid sort of things. So this could be really good for make some futuristic buildings, for example, you know, you could do that. And again, we have this profile here. So I'm just going to go here and do like that. So you can see that. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think this kind of shapes are actually sometimes I've seen these in a motorcycle engine. So, so this could we could probably uh, maybe try to, I don't know, use this. Um, and and we can even like go really in detail here and really just uh, go wild in here to uh, to really you know tweak it really well and it's it's way way easier than than you know getting there and try to duplicate those uh, individual plates by hand or something like that. It's, yuck! I'm not uh, very interested about doing that. So so yeah, uh, 
very uh, powerful things this uh, scale and the same thing is for the rotate so if you again if you're doing some features buildings this might actually be really interesting so you know we could for example do something like uh, um, something like that you know um, uh, do this <laughs> The thing, you know, it's, it's mm, I'm really big kind of a remesh. It, it, it's um, such a good thing. So, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, I'm just gonna get in back in here and do this a uh, little bit. This um, scale. I'm gonna uh, adjust this uh, x amount just a little bit so we get a little bit of this uh, uh, more uh, interesting shapes here. And maybe go to. Um, I would think that maybe. Um, I could go to the Z and uh, maybe uh, adjust it just a little bit so we get uh, something like that in here. So we have a, a little bit of like this. It's not just uniformly going up to down and and yeah. Uh, so this could be um, our could start for our uh, uh, engine and then um, you can sometimes see that in engines and you have this uh, sort of like a you can see that these uh, cylinders are actually. Uh, Cutting so these are sort of cut from this area and then these are pushing in and and so on and and sometimes there's some something else like some bolts that uh, Have just dig into this so uh, I'm just gonna go in here and append um, I think I'm gonna append a new cube 3d in here and I'm just gonna select that I'm just gonna move this guy out a little bit here and I think it's really nice that if it's just gonna do uh, some uh, division to this so we can get some more like rounded uh, edges so so now we can finally get get into live boolean so it's going to activate live boolean in here and then you can see that we have these uh, boolean options in these uh, sub tools here so so this means um, uh, sort of like unify so that it just uh, puts them together and it sort of uh, uh, blends the objects together so that they're they are going to share the same edges and then we have the subtract subtract here, which is gonna just you know do a boolean subtract. It's gonna cut out use that op, use that sub tool as a as a cutter, and then uh, cut uh, with that object to the other mesh. So now I'm just uh, hitting that, and and we can see that now we now the mesh actually disappeared, and and now it's uh, it's working as a cutter. So what you're seeing here, and in, in in when you're using like you're seeing previews. So nothing is is fixed. Nothing is is built on so when we're moving this model we can now see that uh, we're going to be able to model with this cutter in real time so absolutely a fantastic stuff uh, and and you can do that and then if you hit uh, shift f and you do this you can see that now we have this cutter object and we can actually uh, start to sculpt that cutter object and affect our uh, uh, mesh by that way so i could i could for example just um, Go in here and uh, maybe do uh, a little bit of uh, editing for our cutter ops because actually maybe go here and and for example um, I'm just gonna go and uh, uh, hit um, uh, maybe uh, do some something like that um, and uh, so now I've done a little bit of editing here and we can see that it's gonna reflect our change we did to our cutter object it's gonna uh, affect our uh, model as well um, like that and it's in, everything is in real time so I could actually do that and and still uh, uh, we are now uh, you know, just uh, moving that uh, unmasked area so so yeah uh, it's very ni nice way to also come up with new new ideas for new shapes if you're doing some concepting or you're doing something what is not existing in the real world so let's see what we can do here more. So I was thinking that we could actually maybe something, uh, maybe uh, use a ray mesh for this guy as well, and then see that if we can uh, uh, come up with some interesting shapes. So I'm just going to scale this a little bit. So I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, like something like that, and and then uh, uh, maybe I'm going to move this uh, a little bit here, and I'm going to go to uh, a ray mesh again and uh, uh, do some uh, array things here so I have an offset in here and we can see that maybe we want to offset in on X so I'm just gonna maybe move it around here and again uh, maybe to use a repeat uh, like that maybe uh, it's a little bit th thick so I'm gonna uh, move it uh, scale it and move it a little bit and um, uh, what we could do again here we could do scale and um, uh, maybe uh, use the X 
so we can see that we are uh, affecting our scale here and it's very interesting again uh, we could also do the same thing for for z so we could actually uh, affect the scale on z so now we are getting individual unique uh, basically unique uh, cutters for our thing here again i'm gonna do that so now we can see that we have this kind of thing going on and we can again uh, adjust this in real time which is totally awesome if you ask me <laughs> and uh, yeah this could uh, be a good start for our motorcycle engine why not uh, uh, we could also um, do something else for example uh, append like some kind of bolt thing so there could be like a bolt which is going in like a uh, cutting in here so we could just uh, maybe go and append uh, uh, cylinder 3d we have like uh, uh, where is that it's a cylinder 3d here and I'm just gonna do that and um, again we'll move this guy out here and uh, scale it a little bit and uh, I'm just gonna rotate uh, it just tab like that um, uh, something like the 90 and uh, we could say that uh, this could be a good position for our uh, bolt I'm just gonna maybe scale down a little bit so that we can have a little bit uh, smaller area I'm just gonna push this guy in and uh, hit this so now we have uh, our area for uh, our bolt it's pretty easy and again non-destructive because we can get him back in here and, and we could use again array for this to create several bolts actually let's why don't why don't we do that so I'm just gonna do move this guy down a little bit like here and uh, I'm gonna use this wire mount here to to place it around here and uh, now we have two of two of them so uh, yeah so this could be um, this could be something to to begin with so I forgot to mention there's also the third mode here which is the intersect and what this does is it only shows the, the, the part where the objects are intersecting so if we take this guy here and just move it in and and we use this we can see that now we are just showing the intersection this can be also a very cool way to model so if you are uh, modeling something that we want to sort of uh, restrict only to the in intersection this can really really be powerful thing so we can do do all kinds of stuff and so we can do uh, models like that or or I don't know what this could be useful for but but yes this is something that is really good to keep in mind because this can really save a lot of time for you again as well so you can see that we have these arrow things in here. You might wonder what does it mean. So, so what does this mean is that this allows us to group our live boolean uh, subtools in a group. So, so by doing that, after you are finished and you go and uh, uh, you go to a boolean here and you go and uh, make boolean mesh, this is going to allow you to to separate them in separate subtools. So after you uh, group them like that. So for example, here we can say that. Uh, we want these two guys we want this one and then um, then we want this one to be the same as uh, subtool so now we have this this one a group which is beginning here and then we can do another group in here which is say that this one and this one is going to be their own separate subtool so it's a really cool way to and really useful way to to sort of uh, arrange your uh, meshes that if you want some something to sort of blend together and then you don't want others to blend together so you don't want everything to be uh, one uh, unified uh, one subtool you can just uh, uh, quickly organize them by using these so so I think we are looking pretty decent here so let's uh, take a look what we can do then to to really uh, create our uh, actual mesh because still uh, uh, at this point we are just looking at the preview uh, at the, which is uh, done in the render time so nothing is is really actual real geometry so if I'm gonna get in here and maybe just adjust this a little bit so we can get uh, this thing so when you're when you're finished with your boolean live boolean uh, operation and you're, you just want to bake that into into real actual geometry you just get in here and make boolean mesh so so this will then uh, create a new tool for us to 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 continue our work or may finish it or something like that so here we are this is our actual um, actual geometry and uh, it looks pretty uh, it looks pretty good if you ask me I think everything is just a uh, uh, welded to get like they should and and you can see that you have a lot of triangles and things like that so well that's to be expected when dealing with booleans of course so so the the main thing is it works uh, there's no errors uh, it does work um, pretty much perfectly so then from here on you could uh, 
do many things so you could for example uh, read top bodies or you could use um, uh, something like a zero mesh or you could uh, use uh, also dynamesh to this uh, and dynamesh combined with uh, a poly edge polish and those things uh, could be really useful so so yes a live boolean in zbrush is a really really a uh, nice and useful way to 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 do all kinds of things uh, for hard surfaces but but not only hard, hard surfaces this could be used for, for pretty much anything uh, so yeah I, I hope you enjoyed this look at live boolean and array mesh uh, for doing uh, uh, objects like this and uh, yeah please subscribe to my channel it would be great to to see you around and please leave a comment if you have uh, any ideas how you're using uh, live boolean and what you can come up with this so yeah absolutely hope to see you guys around uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you soon this was Siakko. bye bye